Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this important event today. My name is Stefano Grande, and I'm the president and CEO of the Children's Hospital Foundation of Manitoba. I'd like to get, begin by acknowledging that we are on Treaty 1 land, and the land that we are on, we gather here today, is the traditional territory of the Ashinaabe, Cree, Oji Cree, Dakota, and Denny peoples, and the whole land of the Métis Nation. We respect the treaties that were made on these territories. We acknowledge the harms and mistakes of the past, and we dedicate ourselves to move forward in partnership with Indigenous communities in a spirit of reconciliation and collaboration. The land acknowledgement is meaningful to the foundation and why we have started our own process towards reconciliation with the Indigenous community. The meaning of acknowledging the harms and mistakes of the past has taken on an even greater importance in the last several weeks. Our country is in mourning after the graves of Indigenous children were uncovered on the property of a former residential school. And now other residential school grounds are now being looked at. The Indigenous community is deeply saddened, as, as is our foundation and the hospital community of care providers for children. We stand united, though, in raising our voices to ensure these mistakes are never repeated, united in seeking justice, and united in honoring the memories of these children and their families. I would like now to introduce you to Elder Margaret Lavely to offer blessings. Following Elder Lavely's blessings, we have a moment of silence to honor all the children who did not make it home from the residential schools. Elder Lavely, thank you. Good morning, everyone. And it's good to see uh, so many people here on this very, very exciting day for Children's Hospital. And it's been a long time for something like this to occur. I uh, remember years ago when I worked at HSC and part of my work was to work with Children's Hospital. And I remember them talking about a special place for our children, Indigenous children that were coming into hospital for care. And at that time, we were looking at a special place where they could go play and to design the floor of the medicine wheel. And it did happen but that was it. So this part here, I wanna congratulate everyone that participated in making this happen. And I think uh, it's very important that we have this occasion to celebrate 50 years anniversary. And I'm pleased that I was given uh, the opportunity to pr participate with Dr. Melanie Morris to start the ball rolling again, and along with other elders, of course. And so it's come to be, it's becoming a reality now. So congratulations, every one of you for uh, your commitment and your participation and your support. And I was asked to do the opening today with a prayer and to also to, to acknowledge the people that are involved in this big uh, project that we're embarking on. And I want to say my prayer in my language and I, and I will do that now. Bojoni we janish na be minanik. Kchimi gwe che kitwan, madizwin nongum. 
Abijunishin Ali Shnogum, J. Baugoke Ganob and Daman, Egi Unishka Minochi Chob and Daman Oke, Chimi Wetche Kiduan. O Josh could be conditioned a cast, my quand would dame Sagin Dunji. Chimi Wetch Kijemanito at Sokanak Nemishum Sinanic Nego Kominanic. A Bugusene may go away, Kagin or Chibis in the make. Sene Anish Ninagatoene man on a cabinunji yak. Mioke Gapije Cheminoganob man decitumen, Sene. Gooding dash Duni came in an engageminoganob man. Me dashige Anish Nande and Dan Nongum. Ma was here gama a benunji a quinja, Cheminogan Obinda. A book of Saint among Gemanito. She's a way name young, chicky de magani me young. O why she will not key young a benunji a quinja. Then I made a more that she gave Kagi Unia Watawaya. Then I made a more here Benunji Yak Cowed up in the door, Unigi Wokunja. A bogus saint demand that she would think Cheminus say what Nimi Janish Nabe Minani Kuma. His Emily do a bogus saint minan. She's a winning me young chicky de magini me young, a canoma, carbiot, cona kiot. The name that I was given is Water Lily from the grandmothers and grandfathers. That's my spiritual name. My clan is Bear, and I'm from Saging originally, Saging First Nations. I give, I ask for all of us on behalf of all of us who work with children, that we will always be the protectors of our children. And I know many years ago that we had a, a, an organization called um, that means the grandmothers protecting the children. And this is ongoing um, all the time. And we want to continue to do that, to protect the children from harm, from abuse, from hurt, from all of these things that are happening today, that we may become the great protectors of our children. We have a lot of work to do. And this, this project, this, this work that's going on right now is very important. So when children come into children's hospital, they will feel at home, they will feel safe. That's the most important thing is safety. And that's what we aim to do here and have people that will speak their language, that will help them to feel safe and to feel that they too can play in a good way and that they will become healthy adults. And we ask for guidance always to, to, to look at the children generations from now that we will be a part of that legacy that is so needed for our children. This much I will say, thank you, all my relations. Miigwech. Thank you, Elder Lavalie. Uh, thank you for accepting our tobacco offering for your blessing this morning and your words of wisdom. Uh, and thank you for that moment of silence. 
I would uh, also like to extend our sincere condolences to uh, Elder Lavallee and to the Indigenous community on the loss of your husband, Jules Lavallee. Thank you so much for being here today during such a difficult time. Thank you. <clears throat> we are also pleased to see the support of so many elected officials from different levels of government here today. Improving the child health is, is a space that all of us support. I'd like to thank the leaders in the communities across the province that are here today, some of which will be bringing greetings. Leah Gazan, Dan Vandell, John Gutner, Wab Canoe, and, and Doug Lamont. I first would like to introduce you to Josh Gutner, MLA for uh, Borderland and Legislative Assistant to Heather Stephenson, Manitoba's Minister of Health and Seniors Care, to bring greetings on behalf of the province. Good morning, everyone. I'm Josh Ginter, the MLA for Borderland and the Legislative Assistant to the Minister of Health and Seniors Care. I would like to begin by acknowledging that we are on Treaty 1 territory, traditional lands of the Anishinaabe, Cree, Oja Cree, Dakota, and the Nate peoples, and on the homeland of the Métis Nation. It's my pleasure to be here with you today and bring greetings on behalf of the Honourable Heather Stephenson, Minister of Health and Seniors Care, who is unable to be here and who sends her regrets. Thank you to the organizers for their invitation to the launch of the Indigenous Community Healing Space and all of you for participating today. This new Indigenous Community Healing Space at HSC Winnipeg Children's Hospital will help kids and their families from across Manitoba while they are in hospital for care. This is very important as approximately 50% of kids treated at HSC Children's Hospital are Indigenous, many from remote and northern communities. Many of the illnesses impacting kids who visit children's are diseases that require long-term care with specialist teams, which often means visiting the hospital for years. The HSC Children's Hospital has committed 2,000 square feet of space for the Indigenous Community Healing Space. It is designed to be a place where children and families feel safe, can connect with each other, and nurture their whole self, physical, mental, and spiritual while away from their home and cultural supports. The new Indigenous Community Healing Space will feature design elements that reflect Indigenous care, spirituality, and worldview, space for traditional Indigenous ceremonies, including smudging, space for Indigenous elders, healers, and knowledge keepers, library space for Indigenous children's books, and a comfortable breastfeeding corner for Indigenous mothers. Our government is privileged to join with you to continue creating environments that support health and promote wellness for Indigenous Manitobans. In closing, I want to thank you again for the opportunity to participate in this virtual event. Thank you, Mr. Gardner. Uh, we are humbled by the support today uh, from the Indigenous communities across Manitoba for their support of the foundation and the support of this project. We are incredibly grateful to have so many leaders from the indigenous communities here with us today. Welcome. I would now like to invite Grand Chief Arlen Dumas to speak on behalf of the Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs. Tense. Miwich, I mean Tanze Anin Buzu, Meduji Kini Tabi Padek, Nas Kumao Kitya Tisagi, Paskiti Nagia, Ayamiha, Tagi Dutina Maya, Hamama Pia. Uh bring greetings on behalf of the Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs, uh, all of our member nations. I want to acknowledge the elder for uh that wonderful prayer. Um I, I really appreciate the messages and then uh you know the 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 teachings, Kinanas Kumitin Chimigwich. Uh, nice to see some of my uh, colleagues on the call. Uh, Wab, good to see you, Rebecca. Um, uh, quite honored to be able to have a, an opportunity to participate in, in, in this day in acknowledgement of, of such a, a very important and, and crucial and, and critical uh, opening. Um, I uh, think back on a... Uh, uh, as I was preparing to, to bring my messages. And I remember the first time that I had to go to a, a hospital, uh, leaving my home community and, you know, going to this, this building, it was cold and 
uh, it wasn't, you know, it was quite ominous and, and it was a bit scary. And at that time, you know, you had to be left on your own to, you know, sit near in your hospital bed and have all these and very, you know, I, I, I remember the individuals being very nice, but it was still a very sterile and, and cold place. And I think the more that we can do to, to create spaces that are inclusive, that are reflective of who we are and, and reflective of our communities and, and become uh, more home-like and, and more warm, uh, I think that's very significant. It's very important. Um, Nestan gusis agya gusit agusiga migu giya yao agan migu di tin digo igi witch hatik you know uh, as I've shared before um, my 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 son spent a lot of time in the hospital you know I'm appreciative of the uh, the wonderful work that was done and uh, the, the the good people that he had interacted with um, and I know that uh, uh, as hard as the um, uh, children's hospital uh, made uh, attempts to to look for his care and make him comfortable, and he was appreciative of all that. Uh, but I know that uh, in future, uh, having these facilities, uh, the environment that's reflective uh, of our communities, of our culture, and different aspects of of, of where we come from, will 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 uh, help to their their physical healing. It will help to their mental mental health. Uh, it'll it'll bring all those additional supports. So. I'm very, I'm very glad to have been given the opportunity to come and uh, be a part of this day and be a part of the this this uh, initiative and uh, all the best to everyone. So I'll I'll end my my comments with that. I uh, wish you all the best. Uh, I can't wait till I can actually go and see the facility, uh, the rooms uh, in person, and I will endeavor to do that as soon as we're able to. And uh, I look forward to seeing it. Um, so I go sanik and I'm asking now, Chimiguich. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Chief Dumas. Uh, your, your time and your and your words are deeply appreciated. Uh, we would now also like to welcome Chief Dennis Michis, Chief of Long Plain First Nation and spokesperson spokesperson for Treaty One Nations. Thank you much. So I'm going to begin your discussions. When I see that them, can I speak to you at the end? Can I come to you? Or can I just go and go in my yard? We go to ticket. Friends, relatives, it's a very beautiful day. Um, very honored to be here with you. Um, it's uh, today represents a beautiful act of uh, reconciliation, and I think the uh, Health Science Center. Uh, all the good work that you have done to create an indigenous healing room for indigenous children at the HSC Kids Hospital. Um, very, very uh, challenging times we live in as we navigate through the pandemic. Um, you know, 2020, before the pandemic hit, uh, you know, late 2019, we were really looking forward to 2020, um, what that would mean. Uh, because there's a lot of great work happening. And um, with the pandemic uh, unfolding and uh, as we still navigate ourselves through it, it's also created a, I think, a, a time for self-reflection for, for all of us as, uh, you know, here um, in Manitoba, but right across the country and the globe for that matter. And um, so it's opened up our eyes in many ways to, a lot of the challenges we face as Indigenous people and people in general. Um, we're all in this together. And I know there's a lot of great happening, great work happening out there by great organizations such as HSC. But I also want to acknowledge, uh, you know, uh, Indigenous corporations like Travel Council Investment Group and the Spirit Healthcare Group of Companies and led by uh, Heather Berthelet, who's the uh, Métis citizen. And um, I know there's more work to do as we move forward. Uh, this is year, this year representing um, the 150th anniversary of the Treaty One Nation, Treaty One People, um, acknowledgement of that treaty, August the 3rd, 1871, that has allowed for settlement in our country. Um, 
we still have much work to do. I, I really, uh, uh, you know, as a leader for 26 years, um, it's it's been a long struggle for 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 us. Um, but I can see, you know, very I'm very I'm always an internal optimist, and I can see a lot of great things coming um, for our people and uh, and the partnerships that are being created. And you know, with the recent discovery of the unmarked graves and the challenges we face with with what happened at these uh, the, during the residential school era and how children were mistreated and the horrific abuse that they suffered, and our parents, our grandparents, it really um, hits home. Um, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of work to do to, to journey out of that. And uh, as we walk through the medicine wheel, um, you know, as children, teenagers, adults, grandparents, um, we appreciate uh, the blessings we've been given by our creator. And uh, we continue to work for a stronger Canada through that treaty relationship we have and working with uh, great organizations uh, such as what she represents, Stefano. And uh, we really do appreciate uh, all the support we've been getting from Canadians in general. And I know in some ways with, the, with this recent uh, disclosure, it's uh, garnered national attention, international attention, and the support of Canadians in general. And I'm, ho I'm hoping it's a watershed moment where uh, we'll work diligently, continue to work uh, on the path of um, reconciliation. And, uh, and that, but that also includes land reconciliation, economic reconciliation. Um, raising the standard of living for indigenous communities. So um, a lot of work that we need to complete um, and uh, we will continue on that path. So I thank you very much. I appreciate this opportunity. Enjoy your day. Enjoy uh, you know, this beautiful weekends that are ahead of us here. It's Long Plains 145th anniversary, June 20th. We celebrate two treaties. Um, uh, Treaty 1, obviously, um, 1871, August 3rd, and June 20th, 1876, which allowed for settlement in the Central Plains region of uh, around the Portage La Prairie uh, district. So um, lots happening, and uh, we will continue to work in partnership with yourselves and all those that want a better tomorrow for our children, our most precious resource. Thank you very much, and have a beautiful day. Thank you, Chief Michis. Uh, thank you for your, your greetings. And um, I'm, I'm always admired how incredible uh, of an ambassador you are for your, for your community. So thank you. Uh, I would now like to introduce another, uh, another ambassador, uh, Damon Johnson, the president of the Aboriginal Council of Winnipeg. Sorry for the delay. I was getting a little shaky in my older age. <laughs> Anyways, good morning, everyone. Uh, good pleasure morning. To, pleasure to be here. And I want to thank Elder Lavallee for her uh, kind words and thoughts for all of us. Uh, it's an exciting day. Uh, UNDRIP cleared the Senate uh, yesterday and will become law. And uh, I know it will, uh, it will change our relationship with, with everyone in Canada. And, uh, you know, for me, it's a very exciting time because I am now becoming one of the older leaders, surviving leaders in the country. I served in Ontario and uh, in Manitoba now, been here since 1983. And, uh, you know, I mean, this move by the hospital is, uh, is an excellent one. Uh, you know, we, uh, we see in Canada that, you know, there's significant challenges with hospital systems in different provinces in relation to their treatment of Indigenous patients, uh, some of who uh, very unfortunately have died because of that neglect. But, uh, you know, we, we have to focus on the future. We have to make every effort to change things for the better. And this is uh, one of those steps 
like uh, Grand Chief Dumas, I had uh, unfortunately spent time in a health sciences center years ago now for a serious uh, assault. And uh, my treatment was uh, excellent. Uh, no complaints whatsoever. Uh, the nurses, uh, everybody were, were just great, the doctors. So yeah, it's, uh, and I wanna thank uh, the board and Stefano, uh, all the staff for their work on this, uh, making it happen. And uh, it's a genuine example of uh, reconciliation. And uh, yes, there's more work to do, but once you see that the commitment is there uh, to bring the kind of change we want, then it, it gets much easier. And so, uh, as I said, this is a good first step. And uh, yeah, I want to acknowledge all the leaders here today. Uh, we too have much work to do. Uh, you know, a lot of healing to occur even within Indigenous communities, between First Nations, Métis, uh, Inuit, and what I speak for, the uh, urban part. And, uh, you know, Winnipeg is becoming uh, a huge shared space now, First Nations specific, Métis specific, Inuit specific, and the historic urban charitable not-for-profit structure. And I'm hopeful that, uh, you know, our relationships in the past have been, uh, you know, informal, mostly informal in nature. Uh, but I'm hoping as, you know, as the First Nation Métis Inuit move towards self-government, self-determination, that there's a place for us and that we, we can have a good positive relationship and continue making our contributions to the betterment of our, our peoples. So thank you again uh, very much and uh, everybody and uh, yes, goodwill for the future. Thank you. Thank you, Damon. And thank you for your, your passion and your wisdom and your ongoing support. It's deeply appreciated by, by myself and the foundation. Uh, I would now like to introduce you to Wab Kinu. He's with us today to bring uh, some greetings. Wab. Well, thank you very much, uh, Stefano. And Buju Tenue Magani Tok, Nichi Anishinaabe Tok. Mubanakot Nin, Pujun Totem. Margaret, and I do send you my sincere condolences. I want to uh, congratulate all the people whose hard work is coming to uh, fruition today. I know it's been uh, a lot of hard work for many in the healthcare system and the political system over many years to try and get this space so that uh, young First Nations, Métis, Inuit uh, kids can feel welcome and can feel confident in the care that they're receiving and feel good about themselves while they're going through their healthcare experience. It's probably gonna be a challenging time for many of those kids. So if we can give them a culturally safe space where they feel welcome and feel good about uh, where they're at and they feel respected, then I think that's gonna help improve their, their health. And of course, this is part of the bigger project of uh, addressing those systemic barriers and the social determinants of health that many indigenous people face. So I just want to acknowledge all the hard work of uh, all those folks who've uh, made this happen today. And I uh, just want to say uh, miigwech and also to acknowledge uh, all those others who have uh, spoken. So ego se, wopira, and uh, thank you. Thank you, Wab. Uh, we, we appreciate your time and your voice this morning. I'd now like to introduce you to Mr. Dougal Lamont. Uh, Dougal, thank you so much for being here. <laughs> uh, Dougal, you're muted. We can't hear you. Dougal, uh, you're still uh, unmuted. Dougal, we can't hear you. Can you put your mic on? Hi, We're having some technical difficulties, so oh, let's okay. try that again. Hi, it's Dougal Lamont, leader of the Manitoba Liberal Party in LA for St. Boniface. I just want to congratulate everybody for all the hard work and for opening up this uh, incredible venue uh, where I know that uh, with all the love and care that's been put into it, uh, that there's going to be a lot of love and care and healing here as well. 
thank you so much. Merci. Thank you. Miigwech. Thank you, Dougal. You had us all uh, thinking you were alive today, but thank you for the video so much. Uh, I'd like to again thank all of our special guests for sharing your greetings and for being here with us today. Your sincere interest and support is so very important and so appreciated by all of us. Just a quick housekeeping note. Uh, as we go through the presentations, please feel free to use the chat function at the bottom of the Zoom screen. We will take questions following the presentations. Dr. Patricia, Patricia Burke is the Provincial Special Lead for Child Health or Shared Health, as well as the Medical Director of Pediatric Necrology at the Health Science Center Children's Hospital, and Professor and Department Head of Pediatrics and Child Health at the Max Reedy College of Medicine at the University of Manitoba. Dr. Burke is passionate about bringing reconciliation both to the department and the kids' hospital, and has a very strong vision on how we can work together to create institutions that are culturally safe, caring, and compassionate. Dr. Burke. Good morning to our elders, leaders, and colleagues. I'm Dr. Patricia Burke, Department Head of Pediatrics and Child Health, and the Clinical Provincial Specialty Lead for Child Health in Manitoba. I'm truly honored to bring greetings on behalf of Children's Hospital, and also on behalf of Mr. Ronan Seagrave, the Chief Operating Officer of Health Sciences Centre in Winnipeg. I want to start by telling you a little bit about myself. I'm a white settler of Northern European descent. I'm on a journey toward allyship with Indigenous peoples. As a white settler, I can never have your lived experience, but I am here to listen, to learn, and to disrupt racism within our healthcare system. Now, many of you have seen this report on the health and well being of First Nations children in Manitoba. Though I have been treating Indigenous children with kidney disease for more than 20 years, I was saddened by the magnitude of the medical, educational, and social inequities for Indigenous children living in Manitoba. Upon learning of this report, many pediatricians in our department asked what they can do to end these disparities for children. Well, our actions must be louder than our words. In 2020, in my first faculty retreat as a department head, we developed a strategic plan for Indigenous reconciliation at Children's Hospital. We spent a lot of time talking with elders and learned people about the legacy of the Indian residential school system. We ended the day with an official departmental commitment to Indigenous reconciliation, and we broke bread together over a wonderful dinner. But when I reflect on those lessons that I learned on that day, I now truly believe that reconciliation cannot begin without a sincere apology. So as a white settler and a healthcare leader, I apologize for the profound harms caused by the Indian residential school system. I want to also send my condolences to the families of the 215 children who lost their lives at the Kamloops Residential School. At our retreat, we asked ourselves, how do we move forward? How do we begin to right these wrongs? Well, we do not have to look far. We have a template. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission calls to action. And I think that following the TRC recommendations is the only way we can truly begin to honor those who have suffered so greatly. But this is meant to be a happy day. So I want to tell you what we are doing at Children's Hospital now, as well as in the future. And one of the biggest gifts to this hospital was the hiring of Dr. Melanie Morris as our first Indigenous health physician lead. She is a quietly powerful leader through her engagement with elders and community leaders is informing cultural safety practices at Children's Hospital. She is the driving force for our Indigenous healing room which we are celebrating today. We are now setting expectations for anti-racism training for all faculty members. We are working on anti-racism policies for all of our staff at Children's Hospital. We want Indigenous children and their families to feel safe when they come to Children's Hospital. We want them to read culturally relevant books and we want them to see Indigenous art. 
ultimately our measuring stick is the TRC recommendation number 19 to close the gap in healthcare disparities for Indigenous children in Manitoba and in Canada. With your guidance, I am optimistic that we will get there. Miigwech. Thank you so much, Dr. Burke. We are so extremely proud to work with you alongside you and your teams at the Kids Hospital. And now it gives me tremendous pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Melanie Morris, Canada's first and only Métis pediatric surgeon. Dr. Morris is the first physician led for Indigenous health at both the Health Science Center Children's Hospital and in the Department of Pediatrics and Child Health at U of M. In addition to her busy clinical and academic schedule and role, Dr. Morris has been leading the creation of the Indigenous Community Healing Space. We're so proud of Dr. Morris for all that she's accomplished. So to tell you more about, about this journey, the collaborations and the vision for this important space, here's now Dr. Morris. Bonjour, hello. Thank you everyone so very much for taking the time to witness this historic moment. Uh, my deepest condolences, Margaret, for your loss. My gratitude for your opening prayer, um, for all the words, and also for Elder Sherry, who is gonna be here with us today. And the words of Chief Meaches, Chief Dumas, Damon Johnson and Wab Canoe. As indigenous people right now, the sense of grief is very raw. There are over 130 known residential schools across Canada, but the precise number and location of graves of Indigenous children is still unknown. We don't know currently how many Indigenous children were lost. And we owe it to the survivors of these schools. And most of all, we must honour the spirits of these children to see this incredible project through of reconciliation. Ibram X. Kendi said, he is a prolific black advocate and writer and said, one either allows racial inequities to persevere as a racist or confronts racial inequities as an anti-racist. There's no in-between safe space of not racist. The claim of not racist neutrality is a mask for racism. I personally was challenged to face this very question in my own life and my own profession. When one day I received a card from a patient that said, thank you, Dr. Morris, you made me feel safe. At which point I had to reckon with the, the understanding that this institution where we treat indigenous children, where they come for healing, they feel unsafe. They see the constructs of colonialism and they see ongoing racism. And in that very moment, I made that choice to be an anti-racist, to pursue these projects and to pursue these passions with all my whole heart, to protect these children and to recognize their health and well-being is of utmost importance and urgency. I am um, fortunate because I started this path and I was able to come together with Indigenous community members and stakeholders who were able to both help me understand this work, collaborate on this work and move forward on this work. And the first person I'd like to actually um, address and talk about is Leona Starr. Next slide, please. Leona Starr is a Cree woman from Thunder Child First Nations. She's currently the Director of Research for the First Nations Health and Social Secretariat of Manitoba. And she partnered with MCHP to provide a clear view of the context that we face right now about the health of our Indigenous children, in particular, the, first, the health and well-being of First Nations children in Manitoba. She's been a partner in this project from the very inception. And I'll let her speak to the, the work that they've done that helped clarify why this is so critical. Good to help you, Susan. 
My name is Leona Sarr. I come from Thunder Cal First Nation in Treaty 6 Territory. I currently work as the Director of Research within the First Nations Health and Social Secretary of Manitoba. We recently released a joint study in December 2020 called Our Children, Our Future, the Health and Well-Being of First Nations Children in Manitoba. This was a joint research project that was co-led co by the First Nations Health and Social Secretary of Manitoba, the Manitoba First Nations Education Resource Centre, and the Manitoba Centre for Health Policy. This report, report was completed based on our collective response to the Truth and Reconciliation Call to Action, number 19, that called on governments to provide annual reporting that measure indicators and long-term trends to identify goals to close the gaps in health outcomes between Indigenous people and all other Canadians. This is one of the first inaugural reports that measures the wellness of First Nations children within Manitoba. The analysis, interpretation, and the writing of the report was all done in partnership with First Nations under the guidance of our knowledge keepers from each of the five linguistic groups. This report provided the, the necessary baseline of how our First Nations children were doing between the years of 2016 and 2017. We looked at indicators in children's physical and mental health, children's involvement with education, social services, and justice systems based on the availability of data. We compared the health of First Nations children to the health of all other Manitoban children. The findings of the report were not surprising to us as First Nations, nor our knowledge keepers. As the report demonstrated the ongoing disparities and inequities that exist in every aspect of our First Nations children's lives. As a result of colonization and the stolen generations of children that were taken away and placed within Indian residential schools in TB sanatorium, this disconnection from their families, culture, and language continued as generations of Indigenous children were taken away during the Swiss scoop and the present day apprehension policies by the by CFS and justice system. Today, we're seeing the effects of this colonial history of having on our most sacred beings, our children. Within the report, we found that our infants have higher rates of preterm birth, large size for gestational age, and are at risk of being readmitted to hospital after birth. They're 33% less likely to be breastfed upon discharge than all, all other Manitoba newborns. First Nations rates of diabetes are 20 times higher than all other Manitoba children. Their rate of dental surgery is 28 times higher, reflecting their high rate of severe early childhood tooth decay. First Nations teen pregnancy rates are six times higher than all other Manitoba teens. The rate of substance use disorders is more than five times that of other Manitoba teens. First Nations children tend to score, score lower on province-wide tests in schools, and by grade seven, they're twice as likely to be disengaged from school as all other than all other Manitoba children. First Nations children are also eight times more likely to witness a crime and six times more likely to be, victim, to be the victim of a crime than all other Manitoban children. Our knowledge keepers identified urgent calls to action, which included ensuring that First Nations children have equitable access to all provincially funded health and social services, to ensure funding and support is received to deliver culturally appropriate education and language immersion models that are led by First Nations, an immediate overhaul of the child welfare system to end the colonial practice of child apprehension, and to ensure that the pathways created to return birthing practices back to our communities and families so that our children are able to be born within our own territories. On behalf of the First Nations Health and Social Secretary of Manitoba, I'm pleased to be a part of this all Indigenous led team that is supporting the establishment of a healing space initiative at HSC Winnipeg's Children's Hospital. This initiative provides a positive step forward in ensuring safe and equitable care that supports the well 
helping all their children. So I'd like to thank Leona, who can't join us today on the, from the bottom of my heart for both her incredible work, um, but also as a friend and a colleague and somebody who has provided ongoing support and mentorship during this process. Can we put up my slides? So um, I sort of uh, thought maybe I could just do a small introduction about who I am. My name is Melanie Morris. I'm a Métis mother and partner. I am a pediatric surgeon and pediatric urologist in the lead of Indigenous Health at the Children's Hospital. I am fortunate to have grown up on, in the heartland of the Métis Nation, relatively sheltered from racism in a loving family that continued to provide support. And, um, and it wasn't until adulthood that I really, really sort of witnessed some of the horrific um, acts of racism or understood the colonial history that led us to where we are today and why this is so important. When I did um, um, get that letter and when I did decide to take action, um, I, I, I did it in, in sort of incremental steps. And one of them was to establish um, clinics, outreach clinics in, uh, in remote communities to serve uh, the children closer to home as an act of trying to provide safety to these kids. And that's me in a clinic in Rankin Inlet. And then I started to talk about these kinds of issues with stakeholders and, and some of these ideas started to grow. Um, and in the meantime, during this work, I, uh, I was fortunate to have um, been given the opportunity by Dr. Patricia Burke to serve the Children's Hospital as the lead of Indigenous Health, for which I'm eternally grateful. And then also Stefano Grande, who approached me from, on behalf of the foundation um, to push this work further, to make the projects bigger, to make them more meaningful. And it's with these grassroots approaches in combination with partners and leadership that we can see something like this of this magnitude come to reality. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned, and as Leona mentioned, um, this was an all Indigenous led grassroots project. And it started back in 2017 um, with Leah Gazen. Next slide, please. Leah Gazen is a Lakota Chinese Jewish woman who was a professor at the University of Manitoba when we first met. Leah Gazen went on to be elected as an MP um, for the province of Manitoba. And she also was a, a representative at the United Nations Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues. She's currently working as a member of parliament, but she is an advocate, a teacher, an educator, an advisor, and a media contributor that continues to have profound rippling effects through the community and through our country. But back in 2017, Lee and I walked from top to bottom of the entire children's hospital and said, if we had all the money in the world, if we had all the resources in the world, what would we change? And we came up with a list of 10 items uh, that kind of reached every corner and every, uh, every aspect of the Children's Hospital, which we put forward to the Winnipeg Foundation. And I'm happy um, that Noah here is here today to help uh, recognize their contribution to our project. But in, we put it in a reconciliation grant. And then I remember receiving a call from Noah who said, um, I think this is this is this is a, a great project, but could you pick one? And so Leah and I sat down and we said, I think what we need to do is create space. And in that space, we can grow all these other ideas and we can from that space create safety for our kids where then we could provide other things such as healing practices, access to elders, books, language, literacy, all sorts of things that could come from this. And that's how we picked this project. Next slide, please. So fortunately, Leah was, or previous slide, Leah was able to record a video to talk about um, her, her, uh, her role in this, um, in this uh, project. Hello, my name is Leah Gazan, and I'm the Member of Parliament for Winnipeg Centre, and I'm so 
please to join the Winnipeg Children's Hospital today celebration event for the achievement of the Indigenous Community Healing Space. Back in 2017, I had the privilege of working with Dr. Melanie Morris uh, when she first approached me with this amazing idea and many other people of the community. Of course, my uh, career took another path, but I'm just so pleased to know that this project has been realized. It is a tremendous, tremendous contribution uh, to reconciliation with Indigenous peoples, including Indigenous peoples who reside in Winnipeg Center, where the Health Science Center is situated. So thank you so much for your efforts. This is going to make a big difference in healthcare. And I am glad to know that when people come to our community of Winnipeg Center, at the Winnipeg Health Sciences Center Children's Hospital, that they will have a safe space where they can be with their loved ones and family. Again, congratulations to all. Slides, please. So um, Lee and I did this work. We started with this idea and then recognizing that this is a community led project, a collective, a collaborative. I reached out to Elder Margaret Lavallee, Elder Sherry Copenace, and Elder Lavinia Brown. And these extraordinary women were gracious and kind and offered me their wisdom, their counsel, and their time. And we sat together, and this is a photo of us with the in the Manitoba Indigenous Center for um, Cultural uh, Education Center in Winnipeg, discussing this very project. And this was in 2018, I believe. Um, so I just want to take a moment to recognize um, the words of um, Elder, Elder Margaret Lavallee this morning and express my gratitude. I'd like to introduce um, Elder Lavinia Brown, who is a um, Inuk elder who resides in Rankin. She, upon uh, of many of her accomplishments, was the first mayor of Rankin. She was an MLA and she was also deputy prime minister quite an extraordinary list of accomplishments. She can't be with us today. She is unfortunately unwell with fevers and chills and fortunately her COVID test was negative, but she's just unwell and she sends her regards um, to uh, the group today to celebrate this moment. Jerry Copenes is an equally extraordinary woman and we will uh, have the, the fortune and and uh, opportunity to hear from Sherry at the end of this and for which I'm extremely grateful. Uh, Sherry Kopanes is an Anishinaabe um, woman from o Onagaman community. And she's also a um, professor at the University of Winnipeg in social work. She's a drum keeper for Treaty 3, but also for me, she is somebody who has provided me with extraordinary gifts of of kindness and wisdom to help um, create this collective, this, this group of extraordinary people who made this project a reality. And next slide, please. So moving up another year, what we realized is that when we were going to design a space, we had um, some discussions, some content, some ideas, but that we needed to have designers. We need to have people who could actually do the drawings and look at the space and give us that information. So we turned, I turned to a friend, Destiny, and with her partner, Mammy Griffin, um, to create our design team. Destiny and Mammy are part of the Woven Collaborative, um, which is a Indigenous-led design studio. And um, Destiny is Anishinaabe and uh, Mammy Griffith is Dene and they both participate in meaningful design. They've worked in many different areas within the city to create places that reflect local Indigenous cultures and so that people can recognize themselves within their context and spaces. And I'll let them describe more uh, about their, pro their part of this project. Hi there, my name is Destiny Seymour and I'm an Anishinaabe interior designer with Woven Collaborative. Hi, my name is Mamie Griffith and I'm a Dene designer with Woven Collaborative. And Woven Collaborative is our 
Indigenous-led design studio. Our passion is working closely with clients to create inclusive and culturally relevant spaces that they love working and living in. We're so excited to be part of this project, so thank you to the Health Sciences Center and their partners. We can't wait to begin designing this innovative Indigenous healing space together. Thank you. Okay, next slide. Right, so from this, <laughs> this, uh, this extraordinary moment of people coming together with this, this concept and idea, and, and now we have a design team, we have elders, we have um, uh, people getting enthusiastic and excited, but then come in uh, Stefano and Patricia. So now we have um, a, uh, uh, an institutional contribution and a foundation con uh, contribution um, and money, which is obviously essential in any of these kinds of projects. But what I can't stress enough of is it's a collective. I mean, collaboration often requires leadership, but it doesn't always have to be in a hierarchical fashion. It could be egalitarian. It can be something that is um, decentralized. And that's what I really would like to say is that this is a group. This is a whole team of people who've contributed to this. And in this slide is a sort of a short list of a great number of people who've personally contributed to this project. And I um, am so humbled and grateful to work with all these people. And they have specifically had a hand in writing letters in supporting in um, doing editing, wordsmithing in creating ideas, sharing knowledge, and then also informing the process. And so I um, say chimikwech and from my heart for all these, these, these wonderful, generous people who have contributed their time. I'd like to, to, to share with you videos from uh, Lisa Monkman, who's an Anishinaabe uh, family practice uh, physician, who also is the chair of the Truth and Reconciliation Action Plan Committee for the Max Rady Faculty of Medicine. She's a friend, she's a colleague, um, and she's been an important figure in the trajectory of this project, and she's here to tell us a few words. Her mother, Kathy Canoe, has liaised with um, partners in Australia, and we'll hear from Liz Orr from Australia um, on their, their um their contributions. Thank you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the official launch of the Children's Hospital Healing Space. It has been an honor and a privilege to be a part of this uh, visioning process and totally inspiring um, to see the amazing leadership happening at the ground level. And so the space in my heart, I know it's going to be transformative for, for the patients and families and community members it serves. And so I am so excited. Um, and I believe that it's, it's the first step in the process of true reconciliation at the Children's Hospital. So to me, wet in the bottom of our hearts for myself and also my sweet boy here, Tabasonic with me. Welcome everyone. Good day, um, and thank you for the invitation to participate in your celebration at the opening of this amazing new initiative at the Children's Hospital in Winnipeg for First Nation Inuit and Métis families. My name is Liz Orr. I was growing up on Wurundjeri land outside of Melbourne, but I'm currently streaming to you on the country of the Ewan uh, clans in the south coast of New South Wales. I'm right near the beach and I'm really lucky because last year we had the huge lockdown as we have again this year, but lucky to be able to stay here. So I do want to acknowledge uh, Dr. Melanie Morris, Dr. Lisa Monkman, and Dr. Kathy Canoe. That's a lot of doctors um, who've been doing this amazing work to uh, uh, open this center for families and children. 
specifically First Nation family and children who need to use the services at the Children's Hospital there in Winnipeg. I was very lucky to be there in 2019 where I had the opportunity to have a look at the space and we did a little uh, ceremony where Kathy uh, Canoe was able to pass over the uh, book and painting that my very dear friend Veronica Johns gifted Kathy when she was in Darwin with us uh, a number of years ago. Veronica was a child of the stolen generation in Australia, where children were torn from their Aboriginal mothers and families and denied their culture, language and home and were placed in non-Aboriginal homes, group homes or with foster parents. Veronica grew up in the Retta Dixon homes in Darwin with some of her siblings, but they were away from their homelands and their mother's country, which was over in Western Australia. I had the great privilege of working alongside Veronica when we were both employed at the Secretariat for National Aboriginal and Islander Childcare, SNAKE, which is the peak organisation for Aboriginal specific children's services and child and family welfare services. And they have representatives and services from all over Australia. Veronica was a gifted early childhood educator and advocate. And it was such a privilege to work alongside her. I know that she was very touched and felt very connected um, on meeting Kathy. And Kathy will have something to share with you about that meeting too. Both Veronica and I love the saying that we hear from the Dakota teachings called All Our Relations. As an ally, I, I specifically feel very privileged to um, be working alongside First Nation people here in Australia, as I have in my life, and I've learned so much. I wish you every success with this incredibly needed, specific um, support service for First Nation families and, and, and their children there in Winnipeg. Okay, I'll sign off now, bye. Slide, please. Uh, the previous slide, please. So the painting that is referenced in that video is just in the on the side of that image is uh, that image right there um, that we did a ceremony and will be um, placed in the Indigenous Community Healing Space as a recognition of our international allies and friends um, and Indigenous peoples worldwide, especially as Damon announced today the UNDRIP um, passing the Senate. And so recognizing also that we're in a much larger context, but that, that we can make a difference here locally. Next slide. Um, so, so then uh, from there, so that it's sort of like a bit of a, a story about this, uh, this project. But you know what I am humbled and grateful to say is that many of my pediatric colleagues in the time that I've been serving in this role have come to me and I'm so humbled by their genuine enthusiasm their vulnerability and their interest in both learning, participating and changing the, the system in the ways that they can. Um, this is one example. This is a, a, a collaborative, again, a group of people that work in the children's hospital um, and missing on there, unfortunately, are the pediatrics residents who also have decided to join this project on literacy. And the essence of it is that within this room, like I mentioned before, the, 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 the opportunities are limitless, the possibilities are endless, and one of them is to create a book nook, for 
um, we haven't really named it yet, but a book nook, a corner, a place where we can have books in different languages. Um, they have uh, the, the librarian seen on the bottom here by the stack of books has graciously donated a book cart where we can store books in different languages that we can send home with patients. But more importantly, a space where these books can be displayed um, and shelves and where they can be um, uh, celebrated. But And then also more importantly, a place where kids can be read to. We all know that basically from the womb, we start telling children stories. And that is so critical to the development of understanding of themselves, their culture and their context. And this provides us a place in the hospital, especially for our long-term patients to be able to access those resources in a place that is familiar and in languages that they speak. So Chi miigwech to this group of wonderful people who um, are partnering with me, both within literacy projects within the Children's Hospital, but also um, with the creation of a very Indigenous specific book corner within the community uh, space. Next slide, please. So the space. <laughs> so this is sort of the, the exciting part. What does it look like? What is it going to be? What is it, what is it going to, to, to have? And so the space as we know it right now is, the, is what you see on the left-hand side of the picture. Um, I just want to point out the natural light, the access to a balcony, um, the broad space that both provides us with um, room for ceremony, but also um, in a pandemic, social distancing. Um, and then the pictures on the right are some of the mock-ups or designs that we um, had created in the early days. Now I would point out that they are particularly blank, um, but uh, that 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 content, the things on the walls, the books on the shelves, and the and the medicines and the and the, the games and the toys, those will be provided by the patients themselves, the indigenous kids and the elders who will be able to tell us what is meaningful, what is important, what should be there. So our design team, Mammy and Destiny, have put together this ex extraordinary photo so that we can get a kind of an idea of what this might look like and what are the possibilities that can serve, this room can serve to our Indigenous kids in terms of healing and well-being. There's a kitchen, a kitchen that we can cook food, uh, uh, that we can store medicines, that we can um, have have access to at all times where we can participate um, when we do ceremonies and providing food in addition to those. Um, soft shelves, um, places where kids can sit, be read to in the, in the book corner uh, that I was mentioning. Um, we um, have um, the shelving and the stools that all kind of will be interspersed throughout the room so that that creates a, both a sense of um, of understanding of uh, different Indigenous cultures. And then um, creating um, a space on the balcony where we can grow plants, where we can potentially grow and learn about Indigenous medicines um, with the active participation of children. On, this, on the slide, it's very hard to see, but we're going to place a large digital screen. Now we are doing this digitally, which just reinforces how necessary <laughs> that is in this current era. But more importantly, we have a whole number of kids who are isolated in their rooms. We have kids who are coming down from Nunavut who can't leave their rooms because of quarantine. And so this, this large screen will be hooked up to the system network and hooked up the hospital so that our isolated patients can participate, can at least see the room and sort of engage with any of the ceremonies that might occur here. There's an office space. There's an a small um, welcoming space and a place for meetings. But more importantly, it is all centered around this, this, um, this central um, circle, which is where we're going to provide a place for ceremony, for education, and for all sorts of opportunities. Um, we, as, the, as my, um, the elders that have informed me, we're gonna build on these structures so that we can represent elders from all the communities that could potentially be accessed by families to help provide a more holistic view of healing for our kids. And that screen, again, will be able to help us to, to connect to communities where elders can maybe not travel and yet they can still come and speak to our kids through the digital format that right now we all are so familiar with. But being in person will still be <laughs> an extraordinary thing. Um, next slide, please. So I just wanna end um, with the fact that I, it, this is 
this this has been a journey, an extraordinary moment. I am a, a small piece of an enormous group of people who have pushed this forward, and I'm so grateful for all the support of everybody who's spoken today, of everybody who's participating today, and everybody who's who's been engaged in this from the get-go. Um, these are pictures of children that I know personally. One is my son <laughs> um, with his Métis Sash. Uh, Sierra Owen is from Northern Ontario, um, who's gonna undergo several surgical procedures so that I promised her <laughs> Um, that she would be able to go into this room at some point and see her own culture reflected. And then Jerry, who's up in, in Rankin Inlet with his grandfather, I promised him that I will either visit him, but when he comes back to visit me, that it'll be in a place where he feels comfortable, where he feels safe. And I, I think at the end of the day, um, when we think about the bigger picture, this sends a very powerful signal of corrective change, to honor all the little feet that have walked these lands for thousands of years. So thank you very much. Wow, thank you, Dr. Morris. Um, just your incredible vision, the manner in which this initiative is truly bottom up uh, with the ideas coming from uh, the, the circle of your community. Uh, it's wonderful to see your dedication and your passion for this project and for the kids. Your leadership is truly inspiring and we're so proud to be able to support you and your work. Thank you for allowing us to be part of this. We have heard from others today about the importance of reconciliation. I'd like to very quickly tell you about the foundation's journey uh, because this is very deep for us as well, this journey of reconciliation. We undertook significant outreach with Indigenous community leaders uh, in 2018, 2019, to listen, to learn, uh, understand the best approaches for our foundation to engage with and support the Indigenous community and, and be part of the reconciliation efforts. This led to the creation of the Indigenous Advisory Circle for the foundation, which had its inaugural meeting in 2020. We've been honored and humbled by the relationships we are beginning to build, and we hope to deepen these relationships with Indigenous leaders and communities across the province. Two members of our board of directors are from Indigenous communities, Rebecca Chartrand, who also chairs the Indigenous Advisory Circle, and Heather Berthelet, who, who was just elected last week to our board. Leaders from, Indigenous, from the Indigenous community are also members of our campaign cabinet and committees of our board, including two individuals you heard from today, Grand Chief Dumas and Damon Johnson. Thank you so much for your continued and ongoing commitment and support to this precious cause of ours. Working with Rebecca, the foundation has established a framework to help guide the board, staff, and our activities, as well as our learning on how we can best address the TRC calls to actions 19, 22, 23, 24, and others. As you've heard today, his announcements helps us towards number 22. And most importantly, in collaboration with all the stakeholders who are speaking today. Foundation staff and board have undertaken learning, including a blanket exercise, a lunch and learn about Jordan's principle. And we will begin beginning, we'll, and we will begin taking indigenous cultural safety training uh, offered through Shared Health. We continue to look ways to engage and support indigenous kids and their families. Earlier this year, we embarked on a joint campaign with the Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs to provide masks to kids in First Nations and communities across the province, as well as the children's emergency and outpatient clinics at the hospital. Co-branded with Jordan's principal spirit bear and Dr. Goodbear, the masks were there to share a message of strength, health, family, and courage. And now here we are today, kicking off this remarkable project that will make such a difference for the kids and their families who are away from home, enabling them to be connected with their cultural communities in a safe, inclusive, and healing space. The hospital and foundation teams recognize there are few visible signs of Indigenous lands, cultural beliefs, or worldview within the hospital itself. And this is definitely just the start. We are so deeply thankful to have had counsel from our Indigenous advisory circle on the impacts of how safe Indigenous children and their families feel in receiving care. We are so pleased to work closely with Dr. Morris as she leads this project forward for the kids in the hospital. 
I'd like to acknowledge the tremendous leadership of the Manitoba business community for recognizing how vitally cultural safe spaces and services and programming are for people in hospital. The Winnipeg Foundation, Wawanisa Insurance, and CIBC have generously contributed to develop the Indigenous community healing space to get it off the ground. With their leadership, we are nearly halfway to the campaign goal to raise 500,000 for the initial phases of this project. Thank you so much for your generosity. I'd like to now invite Noah Aaron Greenberg, Community Grants Associate for the Winnipeg Foundation and a long-term supporter of the hospital to say a few words. Noah. Tante Miglich, on behalf of uh, the Winnipeg Foundation, congratulations to Dr. Morris and uh, to the Children's Hospital Foundation of Manitoba, as well as the Canadian Association of Pediatric Surgeons for your vision and efforts towards creating uh, an Indigenous healing room at the Children's Hospital of Winnipeg. In 2015, in response to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's 94 calls to action, the Winnipeg Foundation signed the Philanthropic Community's Declaration of Action Towards Reconciliation. Shortly after that, in 2017, the Foundation published an extensive vital signs survey of Winnipeggers that showed that reconciliation as a central theme for community well being that needs more focused attention and immediate action. This prompted the launch in 2019 of a one time reconciliation granting stream that approved $1.3 million in grants to support 20 different reconciliation projects in Winnipeg. I recall that when Dr. Morris first reached out to inquire about opportunities to apply for a grant, it was shortly after the Winnipeg Foundation had wrapped up the reconciliation grants program. But even though that dedicated reconciliation grant stream was no longer available, I gave Dr. Morris the good news about the Winnipeg Foundation's regular community grants program, which could provide an ideal opportunity to seek support for this project. Funding reconciliation initiatives has been a priority in all our activities at the Winnipeg Foundation for several years and continues to be a major focus going forward. The Winnipeg Foundation believes reconciliation is about action, about building a community where our country's first peoples are fully included, treated with fairness and awarded the justice they've been denied for centuries. Unfortunately, systemic racism continues to permeate Canadian society. The Winnipeg Foundation views the creation of an Indigenous healing room at the Children's Hospital as a significant first step to ensuring cultural safety in medical environments for people who are regularly threatened by racism. This project is not only essential for the Indigenous patients and their families who will use this space for comfort and healing, it will also help the larger community understand the importance of pursuing reconciliation by taking action by proactively creating a country that respects its first peoples, ensuring they are treated with justice, fairness, and compassion. Chime Gwich, and once again, congratulations. Thank you, Noah. Wabanese well, Insurance has supported the work of the Health Science Center Children's Hospital through our foundation over the years, and have also generously committed to the healing space. I'd like to now introduce you to Jody Caradice, Chief People and Culture Officer with Wawanese Insurance to say a few words. Jody. Thank you, Stefano. And good morning, or sorry, good afternoon, everyone. I am incredibly grateful to be here today with clearly so many passionate community members. We at Wawanese are truly honored to be involved in the creation of the new Indigenous Community Healing Space at Children's Hospital. The unique features planned for this space and the collaboration and care put into the design make this project incredibly special. I commend everyone who's been involved. For us at Wawanisa, we're here in the business of insurance to look after one another. It's our purpose and it extends to the communities where we work and live. And it's why we support this healing space, which is a real opportunity for us to provide a culturally appropriate, safe place of comfort to children and their families during a difficult time. 
As a company with roots in Manitoba that date back 125 years, we are proud to be a partner to the Children's Hospital Foundation to help make life better for families during their stay at Children's Hospital. And to help this critical part of our community take this important step in the journey of reconciliation. So on behalf of everyone at Wawanisa, thank you so much for allowing us to be part of this incredible healing space and to the Indigenous community members, medical professionals, the Children's Hospital Foundation of Manitoba, and to everyone who has come together to make the Indigenous community healing space possible, please accept our most sincere and heartfelt congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jody. I would now like to introduce you uh, to Mr. Daniel Strang, Senior Manager and Team Leader, CABC Commercial Banking, uh, Prairies. CABC has been, like Wawanisa, just an incredible supporter of our hospital and our research institute. Thank you so much for, for supporting this wonderful initiative of ours, Daniel. Thanks, Stefano. Um, and thank you for inviting us to participate in this event today. Um, it's an honor to be able to represent CIBC um, and be able to contribute um, even in a small way to such an important space for Manitoba and the indigenous communities across our province. Um, when Stefano reached out looking for some uh, for support for this project, um, we jumped at the opportunity to partner with the Children's Hospital Foundation on a project that is gonna be such a positive step forward towards healing for the indigenous children and families across Manitoba. Um, congratulations to everybody who's participated in this project and bringing it to the stage it's at at the moment. Um, we congratulate you again and we look forward to being able to visit this space in person um, when possible. Thank you. Thank you so much, Daniel. It's my pleasure to now introduce to you Rebecca Chartrand, the chair of the Foundation's Indigenous Advisory Circle. Rebecca. Hi, thank you, Stefano. Um, I just want to acknowledge and congratulate all of the work that you've done, particularly Stefano and Dr. Melanie Morris. Um, I, I just have to say that I think the healing has really begun. Uh, the background story that we've heard in terms of the lead up to the development of the healing space is such an important story to tell. Um, it really demonstrates all of the leadership that's been involved, particularly the, the women within our community, because when we look at the larger context, we know that this region really is ground zero um, for missing and murdered Indigenous women. So to see women coming together in this way is so healing and it, it sends such a powerful message. Um, I just want to thank Stefano personally for the work that you've done and just bringing Indigenous people together, bridging, um, uh, bringing people onto the board like myself who came on last year and uh, Dr. Uh, or Heather Berthlett who's uh, coming on this year. Um, I want to acknowledge Dr. Melanie as well um, in terms of all of the work that she's done um, as the lead of Indigenous Health at the Children's Hospital. Incredible work. Obviously, she's gone beyond, you know, above and beyond the call of duty here. Um, I had a personal interaction with her a couple of years ago when she was seeking to get me involved in a research study she was doing. So automatically, I knew she was somebody that was looking to try and connect the dots. Um, some of the things that I've learned since I've been on the board have been um, really important and I think really important for our community to be aware of, you know, the fact that up to 50% of the children that are um, seen at the hospital are Indigenous, and in some cases up to 70%. So when I heard those numbers, I, you know, it was, it was uh, quite overwhelming, and I knew we really needed to do as much as we could to bridge with our community. So I just want to thank, you know, um, Grand Chief Arlen Dumas um, for the partnership um, in bringing those um, masks forward and to um, Chief Dennis Meaches as well, who has been a big supporter of um, this bridging initiative. I also want to recognize all of the private donors. So there's been a lot of private donors in this work. And I think to me that really speaks volumes of, around um, reconciliation. So when we think about reconciliation, reconciliation, it's really about taking action and moving forward in the best way possible. And sometimes people don't know what that means, but I think this is a good demonstration of what we can do. And so I just wanna thank all of the private donors and the corporate donors as well 
um, because I don't think this would be possible with that. I know oftentimes we're looking at improving that relationship with government and the different levels of government, but this is a true example of just, you know, Canadians um, here within our region who are wanting to make a contribution. So, so I'm, I'm deeply moved um, by everything I've heard. Um, so I just wanna thank again, um, Dr. Melanie Morris, who's really been the centerpiece of everything that I've heard here. Um, there is also an article um, that's being written in Grassroots News, so I encourage you all to have a look at that. That's um, telling a little bit more about Dr. Melanie's story. So again, thank you so much, and uh, thank you, Stefano, for all of the great work you've done. You really are going the distance and trying to bridge between our community for everything from, you know, consulting on land acknowledgments, ensuring that you're following the proper protocols, ensuring that you know who to invite. Um, so I, I really think that you're on the right track. So miigwech, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, Rebecca, for your counsel and your guidance. I, I can tell you uh, this journey of reconciliation that we are on is, is one that is deeply entrenched throughout our entire staff and our entire board. And I can tell you our donor communities um, are very much interested in, in, in supporting the needs, the highest needs of our hospital and our research institute in this area. And so this truly is just the beginning. Uh, and now I really would like to invite uh, Zoe Richardson, our new chair of our board, uh, to say a few words, So, Thanks, Stefano. And thanks to each of you for being here today in celebration of this important initiative. Thank you for your wisdom, your wishes, and your support. Um, listening to the elders speak of being protectors of children today has really moved me and I'm just so inspired to work on more incredible initiatives like this and you know Dr. Morris wow you, you're you're truly inspirational to the community so I'm looking forward looking forward to all that we have in store. Um, we appreciate leaders in the business community like Wawanisa, CIBC and the Winnipeg Foundation have entrusted Children's Hospital Foundation to work with Dr. Burke, Dr. Morris and the remarkable and inspiring team of grandmothers, elders, designers, caregivers, doctors, nurses, administrators, educators, kids, and families to build this important space. We invite all Manitobans to join us in creating and enhancing this space by contributing at goodbear.ca slash Indigenous Health. As Stefano has mentioned, this is just the beginning. The foundation is committed to doing the hard work of re reconciliation which as you heard, Rebecca calls reconcilia action. We'll continue to work to, towards earning the trust of indigenous communities across Manitoba, Northwestern Ontario and Nunavut. The foundation will continue to work with teens in the hospitals and the research institute to support indigenous kids and their families as they receive care to create spaces, spaces of safety and healing. Thank you so much for being here today. We're truly grateful. Thank you so much, Zoe. Uh, we will now open it up to questions. Uh, please use the chat function at the bottom of your screen. Um, uh, we have one question. Um, Dr. Morris, um, can you tell us a little bit more about how kids and families are going to be engaged in the process of uh, designing the space and what's required? Thank you for that excellent question. Um, I um, so what we've done to uh, so far is sort of it's a bit of like creating a skeleton in the sense that the space and some of the uh, the allocations of different um, uh, areas is has been undertaken. But what we're going to plan in our next phase is focus groups of Indigenous children, representative of all communities, um, with their families and caregivers that they can come and let us know the things that would be most important to be held in this space. Um, MISEC, the Manitoba Indigenous Cultural Education Centre, has also agreed to partner with us in terms of some of their uh, pedagogic um, principles, their, uh, their games and toys that they found within their own work with the Indigenous kids um, to help inform some of the uh, games and the different uh, different activities that could be done there. Um, the elders uh, 
Council will be expanded. We are going to work with the Indigenous um, Advisory Circle also and with different elders in the community to help inform some of the um, ceremonies. And, and then lastly, um, there's like extraordinary uh, community members, including artists like Casey Adams and um, and uh, and uh, uh, Jenna, who are going to do workshops like um, drum making or art, art, artist tree work um, that will that have worked with indigenous communities and indigenous youth that will help inform us on what has worked best um, in terms of activities and then um, lastly we're going to work with uh, the indigenous services um, to uh, help um, um, connect with some of the greater hospital uh, um, uh, work that's being done within the uh, the indigenous communities thank you very much um, we have another question um, about um, whether or not there will be consultation with the Métis community about design elements in the space itself, and particularly um, Métis influences on design. Thank you. That's a, that's a great uh, question. So I am a Métis, and so I um, feel that this is obviously critically important to include all the groups. And so um, we have connected recently with Barry Lavallee, who's Métis, who's agreed to join the project um, in uh, consultation. And uh, we'll reach out to um, the MMF and the greater Métis community to help inform the Métis concepts in the room and designs, um, in addition to all the First Nations communities, as well as the Inuit community. So each group is going to have uh, representation both in kids and in stakeholders. Thank you very much. Okay, if there are no more questions, thank you everyone. Thank you for your patience and uh, thank you for your, your support. If, uh, if you would like to watch this event again or share it with others, the recordings will be posted to goodbear.ca tomorrow. I, I would now like to conclude this event by inviting Elder Sherry uh, Kopenes to close the event with a song. Elder Kopenes, thank you. A handene magane taga ni jo sek sagma ko ewa se asmuk tigo atik do tem tega ning de jit tigui ho nigi mingi ti jo big ego ko ege nin ka inu inga ne jinga ga gi geta si haja haja gimen tago zim o ega be ka be no ega tuk dai ket o e honje beno chio go esgo ga o nigi ego atene magane ne na e tuk dai ket o et sha nga mi go chia nga ag o gima kanak Oege o gichtag, oe Grand Chief uh, Dumas, Chief Meaches, oege kan nigan kiguga kana kitamat, kinasago, ke oe a wab kinu, oege Dr. Melanie, Rebecca Chartrand, nibio, nibio magitayam, oege kagi gagistag was it oe kigitiziminan, oe a. Margaret Kangi Kendizi, oh, Ja, I need to know. Kaja Nishinabe Nikaz at Margaret Winning of me, watch up Chindina. Where Tisha Nagaman go with my chiman, where Ann in Oshea Nagaman, Ogimagi Jiguk, the Nishinabe Nikaz, Shiga, Totaman, not come go on in Bionjaya, Ah, Gibia Joe Minigun, Nian, Ian Nagaman and Jibino Chiuk. O e mani tu ko e gai jant kaasat. Mi tish e nongo mo ma chi man ga nish na. Mi o e bin o chi gai jant mi ni go e zi ing. Gwe wae ne chi gane ne ming gu ta. Gwe wae ne chong big ao su ing. Chi gish jay ao su ing ea tung dai kit. O e tish pungi inga ja gana shim ta nongo mga ike toan. O e kichi mi gwe ch kitin ni ni men sabay bi jigo ik. O e gegi nua gi gish jay ati zi ni a ma gi bi tu ik. O e gegi nua ki wi tu ka zu ik o e. Indigenous healing space kajin kate goe hakaziga magong binochio katajigan katajiganain nimin kataje kagi geat that tungdaikit ha hak chimi wach. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. My English alias is Sherry Kupnes. Um, just expressing my gratitude and and being honored to to be a part of this uh, work in regards to the, this indigenous healing space that's being created at the 
HSC uh, Children's Hospital and every, each and every one of you for working together collectively to bring this to fruition. There's been words said already in regards to that. And I just want to add my voice and my continued support to that and uh, how, how it's about our children, the well-being of our children, the holistic well-being. And I know in the past that hospitals took great care of us physically, looked after our physical needs. And now we're moving towards the emotional, mental, and spiritual part of that. So I'm real grateful for that. And the song I'm going to render for you, um, it was gifted to my, my uh, aunt. Her English name, a alias, is Mary Lorraine Mandamin. And it was Spirit Woman that gifted her this song in regards to our children. And she has a beautiful story of how that in her dream and in their vision, how this uh, this song was gifted to her. But the words to that song is, uh, and it's, uh, take uh, proper, correct, and careful care and upbringing of, 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 of your children, is what this uh, spirit woman said. And that's the best way I can translate that. It's uh, proper, correct, careful. And when we say all of those English words, it's like you you bring the past, present, and future together in, in raising up our children and in, in taking care of our children. So that's what I'm going to render for you. And I thank each and every one of you for bringing your, your love, your kindness, your care, compassion to this work. So kuchimiigwech. Way I am, way 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 for that incredible song. And with that, thank you everyone for your patience this morning, this afternoon in attending. Thank you and big witch. <laughs>